The learning objective in this podcast is to know what hydrates are, to be able to name them, and to be able to calculate the formula of hydrates. So hydrated compounds are the ones that have loosely attached water molecules with them. For example, this compound, copper 2 sulfate or cupric sulfate pentahydrate. So any compounds where you see dot H2O attached to it. These are called hydrates. Hydra in chemistry stands for water. And hydrates mean that these compounds have water molecules attached to them through physical association. It's not a chemical bonding here, but these water molecules hang around um, <clears throat> each molecule of these compounds. So if you look at cupric sulfate, this is a formula unit, an ionic compound for one mole of cupric sulfate, you see five moles of water are attached to it. Similarly, for one mole of cobalt 2 chloride, you have three moles of water attached to it. So how do you identify the hydrates? You look for dot H2O. This dot in many ways means plus 5H2O or plus 3H2O. So if you were to figure out the molar mass of a hydrate, how would you do that? You'll figure out, for example, for this compound, cupric sulfate pentahydrate, you'll figure out the molar mass of cupric sulfate, and then you'll add molar mass of five water molecules. And that will be the overall molar mass of cupric sulfate pentahydrate. So how you identify the hydrates is by the presence of dot H2O in it. And how do you name them? You write a prefix, <clears throat> mono, di, tri, to indicate the number of water molecules that are present. And then you name the compound just as you would any ionic compound. So for example, here you name the cation copper. It's got two charge, so either cupric sulfate or copper two sulfate. And then you use the prefix penta and then hydrate. This will be cobalt two chloride trihydrate. Now, once we know what the hydrates are, how do we calculate the formula of a hydrate? So if you look at a hydrate, any hydrate, copper sulfate pentahydrate, cobalt chloride dihydrate, or um, calcium oxide monohydrate, all of these have these water molecules attached in them. And if we want to figure out the formula of a hydrate for figuring out the formula of a hydrate, you need two pieces of information. The first is how many moles of an hydrous compound are there? And hydrous means copper sulfate by itself in copper sulfate pentahydrate example. And you need to know how many moles in the same anhydrous compound of water are present. Once you know that, then you know in X mole of dry copper sulfate, you have Y moles of water. So you can figure out in one mole of the anhydrous compound, in this case, cupric sulfate, you will have whatever moles, like Z moles of water. So its formula will be Cu SO4 dot Z water. So ultimately, you're trying to figure out the number of moles of water that are present per mole of a compound. So that's the theory behind it. Now, how do you actually do it in the laboratory? In the laboratory, to determine the formula of a hydrate, first step is to determine the mass you take a certain mass of a hydrate, a weight quantity of a hydrate, and you drive off all the water. So you can figure out mass of anhydrous compound. And if you subtract from mass of hydrate the mass of anhydrous compound, you'll figure out how much water was present in this mass of hydrate. And you can convert mass of water driven off to moles of water. And you know the mass of anhydrous compound convert both to moles and using mole ratios, you can figure out the mass, the, the formula of a hydrate.
this is a good link to look over how to do practice problems. So in this link, they have taken example of the same compound, copper 2 sulfate hydrate, and they don't tell you whether it is penta or tri. It's not always penta. It could be trihydrate as well. And <clears throat> this is a problem where you can, they give you that you start with 0.1778 gram of hydrated compound, and then you can click here to start and you'll see after a certain time, this compound will go from blue to white. So hydrated form of cupric sulfate, X-hydrate is blue, and anhydrous form is white. So you want to make sure that you heat it enough and cool it and then heat it enough when there is no further change in mass. That indicates that all the water has been driven off and they tell you that the dry mass or mass of the anhydrous compound is this much. Now, how would you go about calculating the formula of this hydrate. First of all, if you subtract, so you'll have to wait till this interactive is done heating it and the time kind of stops. Then what you will do is you will subtract from initial mass to final mass. And when you subtract that, what might you get? That's correct. You'll get mass of water and once you get, I can try it on that layer, so once you subtract from initial mass the final mass, that will give you mass of water. Dividing by molar mass, you can get moles of water, and you know the mass <coughs> of anhydrous compound, so if you divide it by molar mass of anhydrous compound, you will get moles of anhydrous compound and moles of water. So ultimate objective here is to get moles of anhydrous compound and moles of water. And you can change the initial mass every time you refresh, reload it, you get a different quantity. So you can do a lot of practice problems with this link. Just to reiterate, what you'll do first is figure out, take out the mass of hydrate. And from the mass of hydrate, if you subtract the final mass, which is mass of anhydrous compound, Anhydrous means without water, and in chemistry means without anhydrous compound. Now, this will give you mass of water that was present in this mass of hydrate or in this mass of anhydrous compound. And divided by molar mass of water, this will give you moles of water. Now, if you take final mass, which is mass of anhydrous compound, divided by molar mass of anhydrous compound, what you end up getting is moles of anhydrous compound without water. In this case, that will be, in the example that we were taking, will be cupric sulfate. And so you have moles of cupric sulfate and moles of water. So if you know that in x moles of cupric sulfate, you have my y moles of water. So in one mole of cupric sulfate will be how many moles of water? And that will be the formula of hydrate. So a few questions to ponder over. What might be a good procedure to calculate percent of water in a hydrate? And I gave you a quick outline of that procedure. But at this point, it might be helpful to think in context of your laboratory situation. What would you do first? What equipment might you need? What will you do next? What are some of the things that can go wrong or you have to watch out in this experiment? The other question to ponder over is how do you identify hydrates? Do you remember the naming for hydrates? And finally, obviously through a lot of practice, um, how do you calculate the formula of a hydrate? Along with this podcast, if you go on the page where you access this podcast, there is a link to a worksheet on practice problem on formulas of hydrate. To recap this podcast, the learning objectives were to identify what a hydrate is, to be able to name them, and to be able to see a procedure how to calculate formula of a hydrate. Thank you for listening.